Shepard and Bail, officers assigned to the community safety team conducted a traffic stop on a vehicle with three occupants. There were also three officers in the same car that stopped these three occupants. During the course of this investigation, officers were fired upon and they returned fire. One of our officers was struck by one of the offenders bullets and sustained a fatal gunshot wound and she is deceased. She had three and a half years on the department. Her partner, a male officer, was also struck and he is currently still in critical condition fighting for his life. He had six years on the department. Officers returned fire and struck one of the offenders who was taken to a local hospital. An update on the offenders in custody. Last night, there were two offenders in custody. Was yet to be located. This morning, we captured the third offender, the female offender, and she is in custody. All three offenders are being interviewed at Area 1 Detectives. A weapon was recovered on scene at the time of the arrest last night. The officer who is deceased came on a job in April of 2018. Her partner came on a job in August of 2014. Despite the shock, grief, pain, and sorrow we feel this morning, our brothers and sisters in blue put this uniform on each and every day. They go to work risking everything to serve the people of Chicago. They come to work willing to run toward danger, toward gunfire. And they're willing to sacrifice their lives to save the lives of perfect strangers. They went to work Today, after last night's tragic, tragic events, officers are working now, right now, continuing this brave, courageous work of protecting the people of Chicago. It's in the honor of our lost officers that we work, that we sacrifice, that we serve, that we risk everything. A new shift of officers, grieving and heartbroken, will do the same thing tonight and tomorrow night. In each and every night, they serve. They go down dark alleys. No one would go down. They confront violent offenders. No one would confront. But they are all made safe and we sleep well at night because of these men and women, because of these brave men and women. I will close with this. Our officers need this city to pray for their strength, to pray for peace, that they are comforted, that their families are comforted, I'm asking Chicago to wrap their arms around our police officers today and encourage them to continue their great work in protecting us all. I'll turn it over to the mayor now. Thank you, Mayor. I'm here as mayor to declare today an official day of mourning for our city. All city buildings will have flags at half staff, and I call upon all other private buildings to do the same. Tragedy has struck again. We mourn the loss of a young officer. And as I did privately in the early morning hours of today, 
I want to publicly offer condolences to her mother, her brother, family, and friends. Please keep this officer in your prayers. Also keep the other officer who was shot in your prayers and his family and his friends. And every day for the rest of his life, uplift him and support them. They will need our help as a city. Two young people doing what we ask. Service over self. Commitment and dedication. I also want to address another issue that's been lashing our city for far too long. There are some who say that we do not do enough for the police and that we are handcuffing them from doing their jobs. There are others who say we do too much for the police and that we never hold them accountable for what they do, particularly in black and brown neighborhoods. For all of this, I say, stop. Just stop. This constant strife is not what we need in this moment. Of course we have to continue the journey to achieve constitutional accountable policing. That cannot be in debate at this point. But let me also reiterate what I've said before and what I know to be true. The police are not our enemies. They are human, just as we are. Flawed, just as we are. But also risking their lives every day for our safety and security. That reality became very real last night in an emergency room amongst tears and fears from the finest and the most courageous people I know. A mother lost her daughter last night, a brother, his sister, a family forever shattered. Another continues to keep vigil at a hospital bed, sending up power for prayers, but no doubt fearing the worst. They are hurting, understandably so. In moments like these, life gets boiled down to its basic essence. And so it will be for these two families. For the rest of us, people of goodwill in the city, I urge you, we must come together. We must unite. We have a common enemy. It's the guns and the gangs. Eradicating both is complex, but we cannot let the size of the challenge deter us. We have to continue striking hard blows every day. No gang member, no drug dealer, no gun dealer can ever have a moment of peace on any block, any neighborhood, not in our city. And to get there, we must be united and single-minded in our determination to do just that. The moment that we are in has been decades in the making. But the manifestations are happening now, on my watch, on our watch. We have to be together in this moment. All of us, every block, every neighborhood. We have to reclaim the physical and moral territory. Shoulder to shoulder, fighting for each other, not against each other. We have a common enemy. And let's not lose sight of that. Today, as we reflect and mourn, let's lift up the names of all of our victims of community violence. Say their names. Say their names. And pray for the Lord to welcome the departed into a place 
where there is no more sorrow. And also today, I ask this. When you see a police officer, say thank you. Say thank you. Devoted, dedicated officers reported for duty today, despite the pain of losing one of their own, and despite their fears, and likely the fears of their families as they walk out the door to report for duty. These officers deserve to make it home safely today and every day. We owe them a debt of gratitude that we will likely never be able to truly repay. But let's not forget to try every day. Say thank you to the Chicago police officers that you see today and be grateful for their sacrifice and their service on behalf of us all. We'll take any questions that you have at this point. Dana Rebick from WGN. Um, could you give any more details on the female officer? We had heard that she possibly just returned from maternity leave and has an infant child. I don't know if that's accurate. Is there anything else more you can tell us about that's, that? That's not accurate. I, I would just encourage you not to uh, follow Twitter news. Um, the uh, mom uh, requests that we withhold more information about her daughter until she's ready to hear you all report it. So we're going to honor her request, and we will ask that you do the same. And then um, last question for me is the three suspects, can you give us their ages and why uh, the traffic stop was initiated? Right now, uh, all three are in custody, and they're being interviewed. Uh, as soon as we complete those interviews, we'll follow up with more detailed information about each and every one of those offenders. They have yet to be officially charged, so we want to try as much as we can to get as much information before we start reporting about them uh, during these interviews. Uh, yes. Evelyn Holmes, uh, Channel 7. Uh, with respect to the traffic stop, uh, which one of the suspects fired on the officers? Did they all do that? Did two of them do that? Was it just... And who Preliminarily, we believe the passenger of the vehicle is the offender who fired upon the officer. It's preliminary, again, we're, we're interviewing each of the offenders. You know how stories change as we interview, for, but preliminarily we believe the, uh, the passenger of the vehicle fired upon the officer. Now would that be the female? Uh, the male passenger. The male passenger. Now did the female fire at anyone? We believe only one offender fired, and okay. it was the passenger, as I mentioned, the male passenger. Is that female, uh, the, the one that were, you all were seeking, has she, did you say she was in custody now? She is in custody. We, we, uh, arrested her this morning, uh, and she's being interviewed as well. Okay. So the, the male passenger who opened fire, that's Can the I one. Identify in, yourself? Oh, Tom Schubert with the Chicago Sun-Times, sorry, Mayor. Um, the, the male passenger who uh, likely opened fire, is this the same individual who was also wounded himself? Yes. Okay. Um, my other question was, uh, what, what really prompted this stop? Was there a pursuit? Was there a investigative alert? Uh, what reason uh, did the, the team have to go after these? We, we have some thoughts, but I think what we believe is the interviews with the offenders will reveal from their statements to us all of that information. So we, we're going to withhold us guessing at why the stop happened and, and really listen for what the offenders are saying since they're being interviewed now. How was the woman able to escape until this morning? From the scene. Was it Again, the, sa the same answer. As soon as we get all the offenders interviewed, and they all are cooperating and being interviewed, we'll have confirmation on the role each person played. Thanks. Hi, Lexi Suter, NBC5. Um, a terrible year in terms of officers being shot at or shot. Do you have updated numbers on that? I sure do. Uh, as you all know, that uh, come to the regular morning, uh, Monday morning pressers, we keep account of that. So 38 officers in 2021 have been shot at or shot. 11 have been struck. And today we sadly report, tragically, one of the 11 is deceased. Thank you. Extraordinary number after last year's 79 officers shot at or shot. Um, a 500% increase from 2019's officers shot at or shot. Will you be revealing, Carla Leal with Telemundo Chicago, will you be uh 
revealing the identity of the two officers involved in this shooting. There are names already uh, on social media. Right, so what we'll do officially is reveal the officer's name as soon as the families give us that okay. We defer to the family members, uh, number one, for notification purposes. We don't want any family member finding out from the news media that their loved one is deceased. And, and secondly, we, we really do ask their permission as a courtesy before we release the name. So we've talked to all of the family members this morning. I met with, the, I called the mom this morning. I met at the hospital with the family of the officer critically injured this morning at the hospital. Uh, so we're, we're awaiting the family's comfort level, and we just ask you all not to report Twitter news as fact. Are you able to reveal the identity, the uh, ethnicity of the officers, the two officers? Uh, we'll hold off and just do the name and everything when the family's okay. All right, thanks. Uh, Jackie Kostek, CBS2. Um, what, were the officers wearing body cameras and will that... Yes, they were, this? and uh, much of what happened was caught on body cam. We do know that, and we reviewed the body cam. We have more reviews to, to conduct. When will that be released? This is, of course, as you know, COPA is in charge of police-involved shooting investigations along with releasing a video. So COPA has yet to even start their official investigation because we're still concluding and trying to figure out the criminal investigation with the interviews of the offenders. Their, COPA is their own scene, and COPA uh, has the purview of the body cam and its release. Uh, one more question. We have seen some surveillance video that appears to show that the officer is pulled up to a car that was not moving. So can you give us some more information about why that car was approached in the first place? First, let me ask you, what is this source social media that you're saying we have seen? No, we found surveillance video on that block. Well, well you're, you're better detectives than our detectives. We, we don't want to confirm speculation. Uh, right now, we're, con we're at the beginning stages uh, of uh, this investigation. As soon as we can confirm and corroborate evidence, we'll be happy to release that to you. But it's one thing to have evidence. It's another thing to corroborate the evidence as real <clears throat> and true and factual. And the two are not the same. Evidence and corroborated evidence are two different things. We try to base what we release to the public on corroborated evidence. Hey, Soup, uh, Jeremy Gorner, Chicago Tribune. Uh, I just have one question. I know you, I wasn't sure if you addressed it before, but even though the um, three suspects are being interviewed right now at Area 1, um, can, obviously without naming them, can you at least give a feel for whether they have any criminal backgrounds or, I um, can. or anything like that? Sure, yes. They, they, one of the offenders does have a criminal background uh, for robbery, um, but it's not extensive. Uh, the driver... Uh, does not have an extensive background at all, not, uh, I think, another robbery um, and maybe another misdemeanor. Um, we have yet to get the full criminal history of the female, but it seems that neither of the three offenders have extensive background at this point. So when you said um, one of the first person you mentioned for robbery, is that the alleged shooter? Yes. Okay, okay. And, that, and you don't know, like, was this person arrested recently or was it's that? a 2019 uh, case okay. for robbery for the shooter okay. like still going through the courts or like no he, he it got adjudicated and uh, he received uh, I believe some type of probated sentence hello I'm Viviana with Univision Network um, is there, is, is there any updated information of the officer who is at the hospital? Critical. Uh, we need your prayers. We'd ask this, uh, that this officer's family be lifted up in prayer um, for healing. That's the most we can update. Now, I'm going to close with this since we don't have any more questions. Now, I wasn't here yesterday. My mom passed suddenly on Thursday night. I flew home to make funeral arrangements. Uh, we completed those funeral arrangements Friday and Saturday, and when I got word late Saturday night of this tragedy with our officers, uh, I took the first flight out um, 
from Dallas to Chicago, which was 6 a.m. this morning. My first stops were at the hospital to check on the officer who was critically injured and then this presser uh, to update you all. So I ask for you to keep these officers in your prayers and uh, lift up my family as well. Thank you very much.